The wormhole hacker scored $250 million yesterday, but that's not the worst of it. Something much worse can happen anytime. In fact, there is something related to bridges that threatens the stability of the whole crypto ecosystem. Let me illustrate. Let's pretend this cup is DeFi. What if there is a small fundamental crack in it? If it's not entirely sealed, just a tiny crack. In short, it's not good guys. Not good at all. There can't be any cracks. And there is a crack. You might remember this tweet from January 8th. This aged a little bit too well. Yeah, I'll come back to this. But first I need to show you exactly how the wormhole hacker did his quarter billion dollar heist yesterday. I shall now show you code, but please don't fast forward now, even if you're not a programmer. Because I think you'll appreciate to see how thin ice we're walking on here. How easy it is to make a mistake. And I'll explain it so that you can follow. And perhaps more interestingly, I'll show you the process. Exactly how the hacker found this bug. Because that's probably repeatable. The bug was on the Solana side of the code. He just used the bridge to cash out Ethereum. The breakdown comes mainly from this thread by this guy Kelvin. And first how this wormhole bridge works is that there's a bunch of validators that should validate that we deposit on the in this case the Solana side and then we can mint on the Ethereum side. And then the Solana smart contract should verify that the signatures from those validators are valid and correct. And it's this smart contract function verify signatures that's supposed to do that. And notably there's a fourth argument here which is a system function called ID. And then in the implementation of this verify signatures they actually verify that you send in the right ID ID argument that you haven't sent in something fake. But as part of that verification they use another system library, another Solana program system variable called load instruction at. And if you look up the load instruction at program it says note it's unsafe because the sysvario account is not checked. Please use load instruction at checked instead which is another instruction below which does the same thing but checks that you sent in the right argument into the function. But this smart contract didn't use that. They used the load instruction at the deprecated one. And the hacker first made a legit deposit of 0.1 ETH. Then the fourth argument is sysvar instructions. But when he made the fraudulent transaction, the fourth argument is not the same. He sent in his own program here. So in the first transaction, he sent in a minted 0.1 ETH. If you remove eight zeros, that's 0.1. Then in the second transaction, he did not send in, but still minted 120,000 ETH. If you remove 80 zeros, that's 120,000. Then if you look at Etherscan, he could send out 80,000 real wrapped ETH on the real Ethereum network. 80,000 was probably everything that was at that bridge at that point, because those were real wrapped ETH that he sent out. Here is the wallet of the dude, 93,000 ETH right now. So he unwrapped them here, 80,000 ETH. And before that he had done another 10,000 and 3,000. Then someone sent him some fake board Ape Yacht Club tokens and he actually sent them back here. Look. So that was the bug as such. The wormhole smart contract called this function which had a bug. But how did the hacker find this bug? Well I can tell you exactly how he found it. Take note of the time of the hack here. The first 10,000 ethers were 19 hours 32 minutes ago. And look here at GitHub. Someone committed some fixes on wormhole. And look here. Someone changed from calling load instruction at to calling load Load instruction at checked. And when did they check that in? 22 hours ago. So about three hours before the hack. So the hacker was clearly monitoring this repository. He saw that this correction was being made and realized that there is a live vulnerability out in the field and he took action immediately. So in short, this was just a bug in the wormhole bridge smart contract code on the Solana side. It happens. Bitcoin had a bug that someone introduced that was live for two years that allowed anyone basically to mint BTC out of thin air. And it was actually found by a Bitcoin cash developer before anyone could exploit. It. So bugs happen and the more complex it gets, the easier it is to introduce a bug. And for clarity, there was no more ETH or SOL created. The blockchains as such are still intact. Someone just needs to pay it back 
from there is or everyone who have deposited money into this bridge are suddenly screwed. Wormhole writes here ETH will be added over the next hours to ensure wrapped ETH is backed one to one. More details to come shortly. And then Twitter asks where is this 320 million coming from? And some dude here clears the mist. 120k wrapped ETH is 324 million. FTX round that closed two days ago 400 million. So the big Sam will pay I guess. But now let me come back to this key insight. Why did I write that? And what is Vitalik saying actually? Now first remember that this time it was a bug. The bug has already been fixed. Okay, then the hacker cannot do that again. But as I said in the beginning, there is a bigger problem here, and that is this one. And it's about consistent state. Vitalik writes, if you had 100 ETH, but sold it for 320,000 die on Uniswap, even if the blockchain gets attacked in some arbitrary, crazy way, at the end of the day, you still have a sensible outcome. Either you keep your 100 ETH or you get your 320,000 die. The outcome where you get neither, or for that matter both, violates protocol's rules, so that will never get accepted. But now imagine what happens if you move 100 ETH onto a bridge on Solana to get 100 Solana wrapped ETH and then Ethereum gets 51% attack. The attacker reverted that transaction on the Ethereum side as soon as the Solana side confirmed it. The contract is now no longer fully backed. So what he's saying here is that the nature of the blockchain is that you can temporarily get it out of state. You can 51% attack it or you can do something with it so that it kind of goes off in the wrong direction but then soon it will come back to a reasonable state. But with bridges, if in the exact meantime you manage to do something on the bridge, by the time that the first network reverts to something reasonable, it's already too late. And this is not a bug. This is not something that you can correct in the code. This is like a logical error, I would say, because you can attack these blockchains. Maybe 51% in attacking Ethereum is very difficult, but that starts getting a lot of different bridges with a lot of different blockchains, and some of them are easier to hack than, for example, Ethereum. In in this case it was Solana because there was a lot of complexity, but in other cases it could be some other blockchain that is even less mature and is easier to attack for whatever reason. And that goes so far as to say that this is serious enough to threaten the whole crypto ecosystem. Maybe this time Sam will pay it back and we're all fine. But what if this keeps happening? So is it hopeless then? Is DeFi threatened? Is the crypto ecosystem threatened? To some extent due to these bridges popping up? Yes, I think it is. But is it hopeless then? No, I think there are some other solutions. They are just not as elegant. I think we're too early into this technology for full out decentralized bridges. I was on a call with Alex Mashinsky last Friday. And by the way, if you haven't seen my interview with Alex Mashinsky, I really think you should look at it. It talks about the whole crypto ecosystem in both a very visionary way and both a very practical way. When someone asks about crypto, I often send them that interview. I think it's really good. But this time we talked about something else and bridges came up. It's funny just a few days before and we talked about this that this is actually insecure and Alex and team are doing something called Celsius X which I said at the call I think is a better solution to this for this exact problem that now played out yesterday. Celsius X is also a bridge but Celsius sits in between mints and burns and deposits the ERC20 and in the chapter decentralization stages it says version 1 centralized bridges using the Celsius backend and then comes proof of collateral in all directions and then step three decentralized minting and burn and I think Alex is absolutely right here we're too early into this technology for full out decentralized bridges I hope that you appreciate that showed you that code because you could see how easy it is to introduce that that bug and even if there are no bugs there is this problem that Vitalik highlighted that I shared a couple of weeks ago this video has no technical analysis but I think understanding the technology in blockchain is just as important important as understanding the financials. Thank you Tuck, see you Larsen out, see you in this video next, hello!